is that we put up because we're afraid, because of fear, being afraid to get hurt or whatever. How many in here have ever lied? Amen. Now look around at the ones who have their hands down because they just lied. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is we have all at one point in our life, we have done something that we know is wrong. Amen? And so what I want to do is before I get started, I want you to watch this video clip. And, uh, and some of us will be able to identify with this, but when this is all said and done, I am going to humiliate myself. <laughs> Come on, you already know I do it anyway, but I mean, I'm going to humiliate myself and I'm going to share something with you that I said I, this morning, I was shaking my head in prayer going, no, God, no, I don't want to, I don't want to. But I'm going to, all right? Man. But before I do, I want to uh, I want you to watch this video. Uh, yeah, I look at porn sometimes. Who doesn't? But don't tell my wife. She'd never understand. When I go on a date, I usually just order a salad. But the whole time, I'm thinking about the carton of ice cream I'm gonna buy on my way home. My wife thinks I quit gambling. What she doesn't know is I lost her house payment this month. But my luck will turn around soon. I can feel it. scripture is is in Proverbs 28 verse 13 and it says he who covers his sins will not prosper but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have what mercy mercy miss Percy <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my lesson over here just so that I can stay with you I'm, I'm trying to get away from the whole pulpit, churchy kind of thing. I want, I want to talk to you as people. I want us to connect as individuals. Amen. And I want to articulate, if I will or if I may, some very wonderful truths that God has spoken to me concerning hiding our sin. The first thing he's saying, he's saying, he who covers his sins will not prosper. And in the scriptures, what he's talking about is that, that when we hide the things that we do wrong, that what happens is it stops us. It keeps us from prospering. Now, this prosper is not talking about, you know, you getting a million dollars or your business going uh, uh, furthering or, or, or your finances getting better. It's not like talking about a financial. It's talking about a mental or a psychological or a spiritual prospering. You see, you could have all the money in the world and still be broke as a joke. Oh, thank you. Amen? Amen. You could have no money in your pocket and be the most richest man in the world. You see, the, but what he's saying is when we hide our sin, we do not prosper. Now, I have a note here. That's a pretty powerful note I think you'll like. It, the word here covers comes from the Hebrew word kasah. <clears throat> I like that. Kasah. Sort of like, you know, aha. But it's kasah. Amen. And kasah is a primitive root. It means to plump or to fill hollows. Now when I was when I was studying this, I was sitting here tapping my head. I was kind of like ding ding. Now what in the world? Feel hollows, and then it dawned on me. You ever hear the term uh, uh, a story full of holes? His story is so full of holes. Amen. Uh, th this this word or this term story full of holes comes into play when understanding this definition. 
Because what, what it's talking about is we're trying to fill up holes with other lies. You see, we're trying to we're trying to, 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 to make it look good. Amen. Uh, when we when we try when we tell a lie, we try to fill these holes uh, uh, to hide or to conceal the truth. Amen. How many have ever done that? Anybody? Or am I the only sinner up here? <laughs> Amen. We try to fill the holes with lies in order to conceal the truth. We're trying to fill it and make it look good because we don't want people to know the real deal, Holy Field. Amen. But there's two things that I want you to, to uh, uh, that take place when we sin. There's two reactions that we could have. We could, it, it, the first thing that we do is we either, what? Go ahead and read that for me. We do what? We hide. How many ever done that? Remember being a kid and you was playing in the living room and you broke one of mama's vases or a, or a, or a lamp or something got busted and the first thing you did, what'd you do? Well, you got to stepping before mama come up in there, man. Come on, let me go. Can we be honest in this place? <laughs> How many ever done that? You start hiding, you you thinking, and then you just and deep down inside of your heart of heart, you know you're gonna get busted. You know, you already know, especially if you're the only child. Now, if you got brothers and sisters, they see you can start. You start thinking, okay, hmm, ah, yeah. Who broke this? It was Jerry who did it. I promise you, it was. <laughs> You know? So we hide. The other thing we can do or we confess. Now the confess part, I don't know, but I don't think there's very many people who like to confess when they do something wrong. Amen? Look at this note here I think is very, very uh, illuminating. We hide because we don't want anyone to know our shortcomings or our mistakes. Because we internalize our mistakes, we believe that people will identify us with our mistakes and will not accept us. Our fear of rejection forces us to hide our sin. How many agree with that? You, you know why the, the whole thing is, is, is we hide our sin because, or we hide, these, we put these masks on to hide our sin because we think that if people found out how tore up we were, they would not want to be around us. You know, one of the most uh, 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 powerful and the, I mean, the, the greatest mask that was ever created, I believe was created from Satan, the deceiver himself, and it was called the mask of religion, the mask of spirituality. I am, I believe honestly and truthfully that there's more people hiding behind the mask of religion and spirituality than anything else in the church. We have more hurt people who are not prospering, who are not going forward in their walk with God and getting connected with God because they're still putting masks up to keep them from going forward in their walk. That's pretty powerful, huh? That people would do. Why? Why would they? Because see, if I'm a Christian and if I make a mistake, I can't tell you that I made a mistake. Because if I tell you, then you won't accept me anymore. And so what I have to do is build this mask and, and build this thing and make you think that I'm so spiritual, so holy that I can never make a mistake. And then you've got about 50, 60, 70, 80 people thinking the same thing and living behind the same mask. So then what happens when I get hurt? What happens when I'm going 
going through things in my life. You know, the, 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 to give you some, in, in all the Bible, if you took the Bible, start from the beginning, Genesis. Adam and Eve, what did they do? They sinned against God, they hid. You go down Cain and Abel, Cain goes, he murders his brother, what does he do? He hides. Where's your brother at, man? I don't know. If I'm my brother's keeper, come on, I'm working. Joseph's brothers, they go in to take him, they grab him up, they sell him into slavery, they take his coat, and they kill a, 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 a lamb, and they throw blood on the coat, and they take it to father, and he's been eaten by animal to cover their sin. All through the Bible, you will see where men have sinned against God and then they'll hide it. Sin, hide. Sin, hide. Sin, hide. I wonder how many people are doing that today. But the amazing thing is, is that if you sin, you will not, and you try to cover that sin, you will not prosper. You will not grow for, forward. You will not go where God wants you to go. You cannot grow if you're still hiding behind the mask. Amen? I want to share with you a story. And I'm not going to keep you long, but if I do, you'll forgive me. But this story... I was a, is, a, is, is a lot like many other stories in the Bible. But this guy was a man after God's own heart. He's the kind of guy that you would say, wow, he has got it together. He's God's right hand man. He's so spiritual and holy and wow, he is just awesome. How many know anybody like that? <laughs> well, this guy, his name is David, by the way. And we're going to read his story. In, in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 through 5, it says, And it happened in the spring of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they de destroyed the people of Amnon, Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and he walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. Now, that's kind of amazing because as you're reading this and you're reading this scenario, the way that the Bible puts it together is first off, he was not where he was supposed to be. How many of you have ever been somewhere where you know you should not be there. Now, now then it says that he was walking up on his top of his uh, uh, the king's palace, and as he's walking, he sees he saw this woman bathing. Now it's kind of amazing because <laughs> when you look up the Hebrew word for saw, it, it comes from the Hebrew word raha. 